Hi Cosplayers, this is Cosplay Vicky here and just a little update video on my R2. We've now been going for seven months on this build and I can't be more pleased. Uh, he's now moving uh, on wheels and uh, we've got lights and some sound in there. Uh, long way off before I get this uh, RC control. But what I want to talk about today, uh, one of the questions I've had around cosplaying and around things like the building of the R2 droid is uh, when to use um, kind of traditional uh, 3D printing, which is with PLA, it's with ABS, uh, you know, the, the traditional kind of 3D printing that many of us use for something like this when we're printing with plastic, uh, against using resin. So a number of people have said, oh, could you print that in resin? And the simple answer is resin is way more expensive and resin uh, is... Um, well, it's, it is a number of things. It's heavier and it is more likely to crack compared to, to PLA plastic. Uh, but what I would say is knowing and understanding uh, which 3D printing style, let's call it that, is useful for what particular tasks. So for large scale 3D printing, like the body of an R2 droid, this is where PLA plus ABS really comes in and a, and a good filament printer will get you a long way to printing something like this uh, uh, R2 droid. I have got the uh, Creality N.S1, uh, which I absolutely love. It's with the uh, 300 to 300 size bed. And it means I can print massive chunks of R2 like this on my printer. But what about, Chris, those little bits in R2 where details are super important. And I would say, actually, this is where resin comes in. So something like these little coin, um, oh gosh, what do we call them, you know, um, from arcade machines. Um, these are all resin printed. Uh, a piece that I've yet to put on is just under the uh, legs here. And it's these uh, little pieces, which on the originals would have very clearly been made of aluminium. Uh, uh, yeah, of uh, uh, Americans would call it aluminum, uh, aluminium. This is where resin printing comes in. The fidelity and the quality of a resin print for that kind of part uh, is just where it gets outstanding. So uh, anything that looks like this, I have been resin printing on R2. So some of the uh, parts of the dome were resin printed. Um, what you can't see, if I spin it, here on the side of R2, all of these greeblies here, this is all resin printed. Even this long greebly down here, I resin printed. Um, that is probably the largest print. I did it in two pieces. And I I felt it was the largest I could kind of get away with. But I, I did not want to have print lines on these little details because I really feel that if they're alumin if they should be aluminium, I really would want them to look as close to that as possible. Yes, R2's dome could be aluminium. Uh, and it's not, it is quite clearly uh, resin, uh, sorry, PLA plus. So, um, but anyway, so for some of these pieces, resin works beautifully. But what what is the biggest resin piece I would recommend printing? Well, even with a, a larger resin printer, I wouldn't go for Greeblies more than this kind of size. This was the largest kind of, resin uh, print that I really would do. These are all resin as well. This is really it as far as I would go. But uh, on the R2, there are these uh, little cylinders uh, that go on the legs. I've got two that are on uh, the, the outer leg and then there's two that goes in, on the uh, central leg. Um, I 3D printed these on my uh, Creality Endor 1. And even with finishing, I was really struggling because they are chromed. I was really struggling to hide print lines on them. And I felt they're the kind of thing that your eye will be drawn to because they're chromed. So what I decided was, could I resin print this? And the conclusion was, it's too big for my resin printer, but also I think it would end up being quite heavy. And one of the things we R2 is you want to try and keep the weight down as much as possible. And of course, a, a 3D printed R2 is going to be a lot lighter than a than a, a full aluminium droid. 
I want it to be as light as possible. So I thought was, ah, actually, my problem with this isn't the sanding of the long kind of uh, piece in the middle. It's actually the ends. I was really struggling with the ends. So what I did was, I've got one just off the camera here. Um, what I did was, oh, I can show you this bit as well. Yeah. What I did was I printed PLA. That's... Um, would have been that piece there. Uh, this was a misprint, that's why it's only half a piece. But I printed that piece, the, that long piece, out of the uh, PLA Plus, and then on the resin printer, I printed the end cap. And essentially, when they two go together, uh, I then ended up with this. Um, these are the scruffy ones out of the four that I made because I, I wanted the ones that go uh, on the outer legs to look the best. So I chose the, the scruffiest ones uh, to go underneath because you can barely see them. So half of that is PLA and the ends of that are all resin. And the difference between the two um, is just radically different in terms of quality of finish uh, of the ends. So the, the end, the resin end, is a much nicer finish uh, than my PLA, even though I spent quite a lot of time on those. I'm quite disappointed. Uh, so that's where I think you could mix and match between two 3D printing styles, where you could have resin and you can have PLA together to create something that's quite lightweight, but uh, actually still looks good and the quality of it is good. One of the uh, other places that I use resin uh, is on these end caps here for the uh, pipes. So uh, somebody actually gave me some um, uh, aluminium ones and the way I wanted to attach the tube, the pipe to uh, R2 was using magnets. So I actually resin printed a whole load of these. So I've got tons of spares of them as well. Uh, printed those out with resin uh, and then the hose kind of connects in and then I could paint those up to make them look like metal uh, very easily and um, printed out these little uh, magnet kind of couplers that will, will go in with the magnets and hold in. So that, that's where I found resin on R2 was uh, really good. So uh, that's kind of what I've been doing. I've been mixing and matching between the two where I feel like some of the fidelity of R2, um, just the resin gives you a sharper print. Uh, so a couple of the places where I've done that down on the foot, there's a whole bunch of different places on the foot where there's little greeblies where I decided to do those in resin. Um, so there you go, there's where there's R2. And uh, if I just pull that off, I can show you. So um, these are all resin. Um, and then painted with chrome paint and they they turned out really really nicely uh, so i've been really pleased with those so that's where pla and resin printing can work together um so which do i prefer resin or pla actually i prefer whichever is going to get me what i need out of it so um i don't have a preference between the two uh the both as finickety as the other uh both have pros and cons but actually when it comes to quality in smaller pieces resin uh, is the way I go, uh, large scale printing, PLA all the way, you would never print something like this out of resin, it'd just be way too heavy. So there you go, this is where R2 is up to so far, super pleased, I'll do a video uh, in a, a couple of weeks time about um, the finishing on my R2 that I'm working on, it's not completed yet, so I'm kind of working on this, um, so I'll do another video in a few weeks just showing how I've done some of the resin done some of the finishing on RT. There you go. Anyway, Cosplay Vicar here over and out. And uh, if you've built an R2, I would really love to see it. And you can find me on Instagram under Cosplay Vicar. Show me your R2s. I would absolutely love that. If you made any other droids as well, if you've built uh, any droid of any kind from any sci-fi, I would love to see what you've come up with, that'd be super fun. Anyway, until next time, enjoy cosplaying, enjoy building, enjoy making, and I'll speak to you soon.